Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama. So we are going to continue reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 4. Uh, we are going to read text 45 today. Does anyone remember what was the last verse that we read? Last time, what, what, what did we read? We heard about... Uh, that how Daksh Lord was pleased by Daksh Maharaj and he appeared before him and he was extremely affectionate towards him and he appeared at Agham Varna and he and then his beauty was described how he's called Purshottam and how he appeared in the eight-handed form on Garuda and how he was beautifully dressed with anklets, armlets and a kamar peti and and all his jewelry that he was wearing was also transcendental and his mukut his vejanti mala and how his body was blue and the beautiful description of god was given and then um this was also explained that when one sees god one is filled with unexplanation unexplained happiness and nothing more to ask whenever you see god and then uh, and Lord also understands our desires. He understood the desires of Daksha Maharaj. And now uh, we are perfect and we was able to see because, and then God said that you were able to see me because we, with the great faith, uh, when the great faith, uh, when the devotees worship with great faith, then you can see me. They are involved in devotion, then they can see God. And it was Daksh Maharaj's service to populate the world, just like Brahmaji also did that in the secondary creation you mentioned about it. And then Lord also wants to give chance to all the jivas and then given chance to rectify our mistakes and go back. And then the highest benefit we can give to anyone is by giving them Krishna consciousness, bhakti to Krishna. And then Krishna becomes very, very happy. And we can see Krishna's heart. He wants us to give Krishna consciousness to others and then become, and then we can become dearest to him. And then there were a lot of examples given in the last 44th, like Devahi Eshi Gunmaya, Mamaya Durattaya, Mame Vansho Jeeva Loke, Jeeva Bhuta Sanatana. And uh, Mukti also means taking the shelter of Krishna. Mukti, liberation begins from devotion and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also said that the like Kabhu Sarge Uthai, Kabhu Narke Duboy, like the Baddha Jeev uh, dives into uh, Avidya and then and he never gets shan like he never gets peace because he's in this material world He's always going through some happiness and distress and everything. But then devotion is only the main thing, what you mentioned. And we should also give it to others. And the person who give this to others, he himself also is very, very dear to Krishna. Mm -hmm. That's what. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> thank you so much. So we'll continue with text 45 today. Yeah. Brahma Bhavo Bhavantascha. Brahma Bhavo Bhavantascha. Manavo Bibudeshwara. Manavo Bibudeshwara. Vibhuta yo mamahi eta. Vibhuta yo mamahi eta. Bhutanam Bhuti Hetavaha Bhutanam Bhuti Hetavaha Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Samishla Prabhupada. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Manos, all the other demigods in the higher planetary systems and you Prajapatis, while increasing the population, are working for the benefit of all living entities. Thus, you expansions of my marginal energy 
are incarnations of my various qualities. There are various types of incarnations or expansions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The expansions of his personal self or Vishnu Tattva are called Swamsha expansions, whereas the living entities who are not Vishnu Tattva but Jiva Tattva are called Vibhinamsha, separated expansions. So what are the personal expansions of the, of the Lord God? Vishnu Tattva Swamsha. Yeah, they are the Vishnu Tattva expansions and they are Swamsha. And what are the separated expansions? Vibhinamsha. And they are the Jivas. The jiva, that's us. So we are also expansions of God. We are part and parcel of God. No? So we are also as expansions. But we are not Vishnu Tattva. We, we are Jiva Tattva, marginal energy. Okay, although Prajapati Daksh is not on the same level as Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, he is compared to them because he engages in the service of the Lord, in the service of the personality of Godhead. It is not that Lord Brahma is considered very great while an ordinary human being trying to preach the glories of the Lord is considered very low. There are no such distinctions. Regardless of whether materially high or materially low, Anyone engaged in the service of the Lord is spiritually very dear to him. So Prabhupada is explaining that on the spiritual platform, it's not like the material platform. You know, we see, oh, how much one is doing, how much, how much, what you're doing, what you're doing. So here the mood, the mood of the devotee is considered. The mood of the devotee, he's serving the Lord no matter the service then, they are all dear to Krishna. Doesn't matter what the service one is doing. Prabhupada would say, whether one is cleaning the temple or cooking or preaching, it's all the same. Or doing pujari service, it's all the same because one is doing service for the Lord. And here Prabhupada is saying that even Lord Brahma, he is doing service to the Lord. And whereas another ordinary human being is also doing service to the Lord. So they both are dear to him. So in this regard, Srila Madhvacharya gives this quotation from the Tantra Nirnaya. Vishesha Vyakti Patrava Brahma Dhyastu Vibhutaya Tad Antarya Minascheva Matsyadya Vibhava Smrita from Lord Brahma down, all the living entities engaged in the service of the Lord are extraordinary and are called vibhuti. So because they are empowered by the Lord. This Shla Prabhupada is quoting Madhvacharya, Madhvacharya's quotation from the Tantra Nirnaya, saying that anyone who is engaged in the service of the Lord is extraordinary. They are called vibhuti. As the Lord says, says in Bhagavad Gita 10.41, Yadvad vibhuti matsatvam shrimad orjitam evava tattat eva vagachatvam mamate jom shasambhavam Know that all beautiful, glorious and mighty creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. A living entity, especially empowered to act on behalf of the Lord, is called Vibhuti. Whereas the Vishnu Tattva incarnations of the Lord, such as the Matsya Avatar, Keshavadrita Meena, Sharira, Jaya Jagadisha Hare, are called Vibhava. So, Vibhuti is a living entity who is empowered by the Lord. You know, one who's doing service like Prajapati Daksh here, he's a great empowered personality. That's how he's able to populate the universe. It's a, it's a big service that he's doing. So he's gotten this empowerment by the Lord. And that's why he's being called a Vibhuti. And the Vishnu Tattvas are called Vibhava. Comments, questions? Or is that okay? Yeah. Okay, then we go on. 
तपो में हृदय ब्रह्म तनुर्विद्या क्रिया कृति अंगानी कृतवो जाता धर्म आत्मा सब सुरा धर्म आत्मा माय डियर ब्राह्मण ऑस्टेरिटी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ मेडिटेशन इज माय हार्ट वेदिक नॉलेज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ हिम्स एंड मंत्रास constitutes my body and spiritual activities and ecstatic emotions are my actual form the ritualistic ceremonies and sacrifices when properly conducted are the various limbs of my body the unseen good fortune proceeding from pious or spiritual activities constitutes my mind and the demigods who execute my orders in various departments are my life and soul so sometimes atheists argue that since god is invisible to their eyes they do not believe in god for them the supreme lord is describing a method by which one can see god in his impersonal form intelligent persons can see god in his personal form as stated in the shastras <laughs> sorry but if one is very eager to see the supreme personality of god at immediately face to face he can see the supreme lord through this description which portrays the various internal and external parts of his body so here yeah, because krishna here social prabhupada is explaining that one may the devotee he understands he 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 hears from the scriptures that god has such a dananda form like we just heard he appeared with eight arms you know but someone may not be able to understand that god has a form so then krishna is saying that they can try to understand him in this way that austerity in the form of meditation is my heart so somebody who is doing meditation can understand that this is a lord of the heart then the vedic the vedic knowledge the vedic hymns the vedic mantras they are krishna's body and spiritual activities and ecstatic emotions are my actual form so you know to to give a conception that the lord has a form the the rituals the rituals that one does the sacrifice one does they are the limbs you know the hands the legs and and when one does spiritual activities of pious activities one gets good fortune that good fortune is the mind of the lord and he is saying that the demigods are his life and soul the demigods are his part and parcel they are following his orders they are his life and soul so this is how prabhupad is explaining that one can see god face to face immediately by understanding this description to engage in tapasya or denial of material activities is the first principle of spiritual life then there are spiritual activities such as the performance of vedic ritualistic sacrifices study of the vedic knowledge meditation upon the supreme personality of godhead and chanting of the hari krishna maha mantra one should also respect the demigods and understand how they are situated how they act and how they manage the activities of the various departments of this material world so we 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 understood to quite some degree when we were reading about the creation of how the demigods are there the different demigods which are controlling different parts of the body you know and they are great personalities so they are worthy of our highest respect in this way one can see how god is existing and how everything is managed perfectly because of the presence of the supreme lord hari so krishna when we hari krishna krishna so are the yogis and gyanis considered atheists no right the yogis and gyanis yeah are they considered yeah, because, atheists yeah why do you say they, that uh, 
why I say because I don't had said earlier that those who uh who create the impersonal form mm -hmm. who, of uh, of the Lord mm -hmm. believe some the atheists argue that since God is invisible to their eyes, they do not believe in God. For them, the Supreme Lord is describing a matter by which one can see God in his impersonal form. So I'm just wondering. Ah. Yeah. So, so, so no, because... so, so, because someone may say that God does not have a form or someone may not believe in God. One who does not believe in God, that's an atheist. Um, and Prabhupada okay. has kept, he has, um, hey, what's, what's this? One moment, huh? I have yeah. to plug in the battery. Okay, I was, I was wondering my, oh, my phone is. <laughs> uh, no, it seems it's mine. One moment. Yeah. Okay. Okay, somehow. Have come out, I guess. So yeah, um, Prabhupada does say, uh, I think somewhere in Bhagavad Gita or some of his purports I've read that impersonalism is actually covered atheism because because, atheism, right? because we are denying the existence of the supreme person. So it's like covered atheism. It's not atheism right away. But if you actually unpackage it, you'll discover that it's atheism. Because not believing in one supreme God, right? From what I thought, and I understood atheism is actually totally you don't believe in God at all. Yeah, so but some someone may superficially agree, believe in God, but if you further ask them about their philosophy, it may be actually, it may be atheism at its core but it's just packaged in a nice way okay. that, because to deny the existence of, of God as a person is actually atheism yeah. right so one may not yeah. say it very directly but we may, one may say it in very flowery way the same thing So, or one may believe that one one may become God at one time. So that's also covered atheism, because then that's denying the existence of one that one supreme God. Yeah. You know, so one may make up a lot of fancy words and fancy philosophy, but at its core, it may be atheism. So that means the yogis, the jnanis. <laughs> it's so, but not the brahmavadis. You again see, it, again, if you go in detail, again, it go, like the jnani could be the brahmavadis, those who understand that there is a supreme brahman. So that's not atheism. Yes. But those who think that, okay, I can, I am that supreme brahman, then that is atheism. Okay. Right. You know, understanding that there is a, a there is a God and that I am not that God. So that's not atheism, but thinking that, okay, I am God, that's like covered up. It's not openly atheism. Prabhupada has mentioned that in many places. Oh. Uh, Hare Krishna Shilpaji, in the Hindi book, the first yeah. line, it says yeah. that Kabhi kabhi nastik log tark karte hain ke Ishwar yeah. hume aankhon se nahi dikte. Yeah. Isi liye ve Ishwar mein vishwash nahi karte. So like this is the one of the reasons because they can't see God. That's it is not right. that they don't, yeah, because they can't see, that's why they yeah. don't believe. Yeah, that's what's here also in the English also is the same thing. Oh, so yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. But here Sneha was asking another point. So, whether the, yeah, whether the 
yogis and the gyanis, na no? do they come yeah. with this? So, like, but see, the yogi, <laughs> if he understands that the paramatma is different than me, that I'm the paramatma and I'm seeing the paramatma, that's not atheism then. Mm. You know, but but thinking that I am that paramatma, then that becomes Religious. covered atheism. Yeah. Covered in a very subtle way. You understand? Yes. It is, yeah. yeah? Okay. Okay. But also it can't be like directly called. But then if you analyze and analyze, then you'll come to understand. Ah, but then that's not it, agreeing in the, or rather not accepting the existence of the Supreme Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Because see this re realization, the Paramatma realization and the Brahman, also do, I mean, at times bring you to the uh, Bhagwan realization, right? That's right. Then, That's right. Yes. So one just has to continue in the process. That's right. That is yes. Right. Yeah. One has to just continue. And then there will be a gradual elevation of consciousness. We don't have to stop at that point. You know, but rather just keep continuing, keep on continuing. And then we will come to realize, oh, there is a Supreme Lord. Yes. Yeah. As Krishna says, no, Bhavnam Janmanam Ante Gyanavan Mam Prapatyante, that one who is on the path of knowledge, Gyan, he may take many births and deaths, but ultimately he will come to understand that I am the cause of all causes and he will surrender to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like that process is very difficult. Like why, like, you know, going through <laughs> so much of... Yeah. You know, that, uh, and yeah, and yeah. That's yeah. right. You said the word difficult, not easy. Very difficult process. Because in the 12th chapter, right, Bhagavad Gita, like Arjuna was asking, no? that which ah, is yes. the... Yeah, so they say. Yeah, true. It's a very difficult process. So the bhakti devotion is the fastest and easiest. That's right. And the surest. Sure. Fastest, easiest, surest. So, okay, I think we are. Okay, one should also respect the demigods and how they are situated, how they, oh, we, we've said that, All right? In this way, one can see how God is existing and how everything is managed perfectly because of the presence of the Supreme Lord. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 9.10, Maya Dhyakshina Prakriti Suyate Sa Chara Charam Hetu Nanena Kaunteya Jagat Vipari Vartate this material nature is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, and it is producing all moving and non-moving beings. By its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. So Krishna is simil very clearly, he is saying, the material nature is working under my direction. He's saying it is my will, my law, material law is my law. And the living entities are being born, they are being dead, they are, uh, you know, dying. All this is happening. It's my arrangement. If one is unable to see the Supreme Lord, although he's present as Krishna in his various incarnations, one may see the Supreme Lord's impersonal feature according to the direction of the Vedas by seeing the activities of material nature. You know, as we say universal law, there is a universal law, there is a material law of the material world. So that is the impersonal form of Krishna. Krishna says, time I am. Time is impersonal form of Krishna. Because one is not able to see Krishna, but one is able to see how his energy is working. Anything done under the direction of the Vedic injunctions is called Dharma as described by the order carriers of Yamraj, Bhagavatam 6, Canto 6, Chapter 1, Text 40, Veda Pranihito Dharma, 
Tiya dharma stadbe paryaya. Vedo narayana saksha. Swayam bhuriti shushruma. That which is prescribed in the Vedas constitutes dharma. The religious principles. And the opposite of that is relig irreligion. The Vedas are directly the supreme personality of Godhead Narayan and are self-born. This we have heard from Yamaraj. So we heard this not very long ago. That when the Vishnu Dutas asked the Yamadutas what is Dharma, they say the, the Vedic principles, the religious principles, uh, that is Dharma. And Adharma is what is not stated in the Vedas, what is considered as sinful. In this connection, Srila Madhvacharya comments, Tapo Bhimani Rudrastu Vishnu Hridayam Ashrita Vidya Rupa Tathai Goma Vishnu Stanu Apashrita Shingaradi Akriti Gataha Kriyatma Pakashasanaha Angeshu Kritava Sarve Madhya Dehe Chadharmala Prano Vayus Chitagato Brahmadya Sveshu Devataha the various demigods are all acting under the protection of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And according to their various actions, the demigods are differently named. So here Prabhupada is quoting Madhvacharya. Madhvacharya is saying that the demigods are also under the protection of the Supreme Lord. They, are, they have different services. They have different names according to their services like Brahma, Indra, Surya, they, these are all posts. Then there are different personalities who are occupying these positions. As we have Minister of Education, Minister of Transport, you know, Minister of um, Housing, say. And then there are different persons with different names who occupy those posts. So the demigods are also posts. Lord Brahma is also a post. Aham eva sam eva gre. Aham eva sam eva gre. Na anyat kinchantaram bahi. Na anyat kinchantaram bahi. Samgyana matram avyaktam. Samgyana matram avyaktam. Prasuptam eva vishvata. Prasuptam eva vishvata. Before the creation of this cosmic manifestation, I alone existed with my specific spiritual potencies. Consciousness was then unmanifested, just as one's consciousness is unmanifested. During the time of sleep. The word aham indicates a person. As explained in the Vedas. Nityo nityanam chetanas chetanana. Katha Panishad 2.2.13 The Lord is the supreme eternal among innumerable eternals. And the supreme living being among the innumerable living beings. So aham. I. So here. Lord Vishnu, he is saying that he existed before this manifestation. He said he alone existed with his spiritual energies, with his spiritual potencies. Consciousness was not yet manifested. There was no creation. Just as, you know, when we are sleeping, we don't know what's happening around us. As good as unconscious. Right? The Lord is a person who also has impersonal features, as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.11, Adanti Tat Tattva Vidas, Tattvam Yajnanam Advayam, Brahmeti Parmatmeti Bhagavan Iti Shampiyate. Learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this non dual substance Brahman, Parmatma, or Bhagavan. Consideration of the Parmatma and impersonal Brahman arose after the creation. Before the creation, only the Supreme Personality of God had existed. So God himself existed before the creation. You know, he expanded himself as the Paramatma only after the creation happened. Uh, 
Uh, and this concept of impersonal Brahman also came into consideration after the creation. Before that, God in his personal feature is existing. So, Paramatma, okay, Paramatma, I understand that he expands to enter every atom and into our heart. So that I can understand that happens after creation. But impersonal Brahman, well, the Brahma Jyoti always exists, no? So how yeah. can we understand that? That impersonal Brahman arose after it. Brahma Jyoti is always there. You know, even before the creation, because even the spiritual planets are stated, situated in the Brahma Jyoti. And it's the light coming from Krishna's body. So I'm, I'm not able to understand. He, he or is it that thinking that God is impersonal, that thought process came after the creation? Huh? Yeah, I was a bit confused as part yeah. yeah. But as I, okay, then the way I can understand is that Hare Krishna, I can't Lord hear. Is huh? I can't hear. You can't hear? There's some disturbance. Some disturbance in Ah, okay, let me see. Okay, is that better? Okay. Yeah, it's better. Yes, Thank you. Yes, Hare Krishna. Oh. Hare Krishna. Okay. So, or I, I can understand it in this way. If you all have any other understanding, you can share with me that thinking that this impersonal, that this light which is coming, that is God. This thought process happened after the creation. I can understand it in this way. Hare Krishna, I did. I didn't understand what was the point. Actually, it all got uh, disturbed. Okay, okay. Here yeah. we are reading this consideration of the Paramatma and impersonal Brahman arose after the creation. Before the creation, only the supreme personality of God had existed. Yes, because God exists before the creation. God, you know, the supreme person, He exists before the creation. He. He expands as Paramatma only to accompany us in this material world. And to and he enters into every atom of the universe after the creation happens. So this, we can understand it. That yes, Paramatma is created after the, the consideration of Paramatma is after creation. And impersonal Brahman, I understand it, is that considering that God is impersonal, that thought process yeah. arose after Correct. the creation. Yeah. Consideration, yeah. see, the, the, the living entities, right? Started, yeah. Uh, then the they started, entities. some started thinking yes. this way. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. So as firmly declared in Bhagavad Gita 1855, the Lord can be understood only by Bhakti Yoga. The ultimate cause. The supreme cause of creation is the supreme personality who, of Godhead who can be understood only by Bhakti Yoga. He cannot be understood by speculative philosophical research or by meditation since all, these, all such processes came into existence after the material creation. Uh, because Bhakti is the Sanatan Dharma. It's the it's the eternal activity of the soul, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we are saying that real life of the living entity begins after liberation. So, so is this point clear then? That yes. the gyan process, meditation process, it was created after the material creation, but, but bhakti always exists. And it's only by bhakti one can understand God. Because the soul, the pure soul is always engaged in bhakti. Is that okay? Yeah, but even bhakti also uh, started only when the creation, right? No. Done no. Because there was nothing, right? Except are... for the Lord. But the spiritual world exists. Right? 
Yeah, yeah we are always, always existing. existing. A spiritual world is always yeah. existing. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. We have to understand Which, it in yeah, at that eternal of point of view. Yeah. yeah. So bhakti is always existing. Bhakti always. is eternal. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the impersonal and localized conceptions of the Supreme Lord are more or less materially contaminated. Yeah. The conception of the Lord as, as light or as Paramatma are more or less material contaminated because they come into existence only after the creation has happened and the clear understanding of God as a person is not yet there and that having a can have a relationship with him. The real spiritual process therefore is bhakti yoga. As the Lord says, bhakti amam abhijanati. Only by devotional service can I be understood. So we can see that bhakti is spiritual, is not material. You know, so it's the process and it's the goal. You know, like chanting is the process, but yet it's the goal also. So before the creation, the Lord existed as a person, as indicated here by the word aham. Here Vishnu is saying, I existed, aham, I am existing before the creation. When Prajapati Daksha saw him as a person, was beautifully dressed and ornamented. He actually experienced the meaning of this word aham through devotional service. So that's why it is said, engage in bhakti. It's the eternal activity and the result of bhakti is eternal, never lost. Each person is eternal because the Lord says that he existed as a person before the creation, agree, and will also exist after the annihilation. The Lord is a person eternally. Shla Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur therefore quotes these verses from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10 to 10, chapter 9, text 13 to 14. Na chantar na bahiryasya na purvam na pichaparam purva param bahis chantar jagata yo jagachaya tam matva tam matvatma jam avyaktam vartya lingam adhoksha jam Gopiko kul khale damna babanda prakritam yatha. The personality of God had appeared in Vrindavan as the son of Mother Yashoda, who bound the Lord with rope, just as an ordinary mother binds a material child. There are actually no divisions of external and internal for the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Satchidananda Vigraha. But when he appears in his own form, the unintelligent think him an ordinary person. So Krishna, when he appears, there's no difference between his body, his soul. That's his eternal form, such an ananda form. We are not able to understand because we are of less intelligence. But his form is eternal. Like right now, there's a difference between our soul and our body. But when Krishna comes to the material world, he's coming in his own spiritual form. Although he comes in his own body, which never changes, mudas, the unintelligent, think that the impersonal Brahman has assumed the material body to come in the form of a person. So one may think that, oh, God actually has no form, but now he has taken this form of Krishna and come before me. So this form of Krishna is material. But that is not, the, uh, that is not true. Krishna, his body is spiritual, never changes. Krishna when he comes to this material world, he's coming in his own spiritual body. It's not that God is light and then he's becoming a person from the light. No. God is a person and the light is coming from him. Just like we see the sunlight is coming from the sun planet. Not that the sun planet is coming from sunlight. It's not that the sunlight is there and the sunlight is giving birth to the sun planet. 
it's not like that. It is the sun planet is there and the sunlight is coming from the sun planet. Similarly, God as a person, he is a person, he's existing and the light is coming from his body. Ordinary living beings assume material bodies, but the Supreme Personality of God it does not. Okay. So, do you all want to stop here? Because this is going to go on quite a bit. And I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So, we'll stop here. Did anyone have any quick comment or any quick question? Or was it okay? No. All yeah. good, all good. So, yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, thank you so much. La Prabhupada ki jai, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Gaur Bhaktavrindi ki jai, Hare Krishna. Thank you all so much.